Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host, Mohamed Azam, and in this screencast, I'm going to show you one of the controls that I have been working on. It's called a sharp, rich text box control. So a sharp, rich text box control, it inherits from a normal, rich text box control of WPF. And this is, of course, a WPF application, but it will it has some other features that the rich text box doesn't have. So the first thing is that I can type anything Let's say uh, high on coding, you know, host number of articles, videos, and podcasts. So as you can see that as I'm typing, the counter is going, or it's like remaining characters are now less. And there is a notify limit property also on this sharp rich text box, which will allow you to set that the color or the template or style of this particular counter. Now this counter is not really part of the sharp rich text box control. This is just a text block. The reason that it is not part of the control is that you can provide this appearance, this particular content, like which is a count counter, like 120 characters or whatever your count is to any element that you want. So the sharp rich text box control has properties that you can uh, bind to some other controls. If you're interested in a pop-up, if you're interested in like, you know, anything, then you can bind that, those properties on any control in WPF. So as soon as I type, you can actually see the characters are less and less. Of course, there are certain keys that are not disabled. Uh, even if, if your account is full, like backspace, delete, cut and copy, and arrow keys, these are not disabled even if your account is uh, remaining characters are zero. One other thing is that I have coded it so that when the characters are 100, it's going to notify you in a stylish way. It's going to say that, okay, uh, you have 100 characters remaining, so it will turn into red, and let me see. So high encoding host number of article videos, and then please visit high on coding. See, so now the, the characters, since they are less than 100, it has changed to red color, indicating that you have only 93 characters to type, so type wisely, okay? Now I'm not going to implement it because it's going to take a while to implement this and it's already been done. I'm going to show you what properties that I use and what is like the journal architecture of the sharp rich, box, rich text box control one other thing is that if I have something uh, from in the notepad or in the web, I, I can just copy paste through the clipboard and it's going to increase the count. Okay. One interesting thing, let me show you. So now the count is actually zero. Now it's one, now it's zero. So even if I press any key, it's not even going to work. When I right click, I cannot paste because there are no characters that I can paste because the count is zero. But if I remove one character, you will see that the paste option is there. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to paste the only the first character in the clipboard text. So it only paste edge, okay? And uh, maybe that was the character that was selected previously. So, oh, where did it go? So here we go. So if I remove that character, and I'm going to say paste, now I pasted T, because T was a character that was selected before. Okay? And so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go through the code. So this is a sharp, rich text box. It inherits from the rich text box control, and it also implements the I notify property changed event. And there are a couple of other things, a dependency property like maximum characters. So this can be limited to 100, 200, 2000, whatever is the maximum number of characters that you can type. The notification limit is that when it reaches this particular limit, which is the notification limit, then it will trigger an event or it will trigger some sort of a style change. You have a notification style name property, notification style property, default notification style property, is valid property, which, uh, well, basically, I don't think you need is a valid property, okay? So we have different things going on, and this is basically the part where you register all these static dependency properties. 
then we have some sort of a, a property changed event that's going on. I like to go to a different part. So is valid, then we have preview. Now, preview executed is very important, okay, because it is there where you are going to say that the event is handled. Now, preview executed is before you can actually see, before the user can see the corrector as he types on the screen, okay? So this is where you can stop that corrector or stop the event from propagating. And this is done by saying handle is true. So if handle is true, then you can, uh, then it, it won't be handled on the uh, other ways. I mean, it, it won't be held handled on the, uh, I think it's called bubbled events. I think this is one of the tunnel events, so it won't be bubbled to the other ones, okay? One other thing, which I'm going to show you, but I, I'm not going to discuss in uh, this video is, which I think is pretty cool, let me actually enable that, is using the opacity and using the background of the rich or the sharp text box control to show the number. And I'll actually show you what I mean. You see now? So this is a sharp uh, text box control, just like the previous one. But now the number of the remaining characters that you can type or the number of characters you can type are displayed in the background and you can write over it. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, you can uh, set the opacity to be really, really low, like 0 0.1. I think right now it's like 0 0.3 or 4, but you can set it to more kind of like a fading effect so it's, it doesn't interfere where, when the person is actually typing. And it has the same effect. So if it uh, reaches uh, 100, it's going to change the color, as you can see. Okay, and I can keep on typing until I reach the zero, and now I cannot really type anything. I know it's kind of hard for me to go through uh, all the code, but it will be discussed in the article and you know where the article is hosted, right? The article is hosted on High on Coding, where I host the articles, videos, and also podcast. If you haven't subscribed to podcast, here's the link. Just go over there and subscribe it. When And while you're there, how about some donations? High on Coding uh, is always looking for donations, and you have to realize that each video takes about 30 to 60 minutes to record and then additional time to convert to HD format. Then there are bandwidth usage costs and hosting costs, which are some of the major expenses of high encoding. So if you're there, how about donating an amount? How about a monthly recurring donation? And it's the amount is pretty low, like $2 monthly, $5 monthly, $10 monthly. That's pretty much the amount that you uh, have lunch, right? That's a lunch amount. So that's pretty much it. And I will be, uh, writing an article and it will be hosted on High on Coding. And if you have any suggestions, any comments, any rants, you can just email me at azamsharp at gmail.com. Thank you very much.